In today's video, you're gonna make a glossy looking robot using motion capture data and Cinema 4D. Stay tuned for this one. Hey, it's Nick here again from Grayscale Gorilla helping you make better renders in less time. Now, before we get started with today's tutorial, I wanted to remind you to please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a lot more videos just like this coming out. We also have an intro to Cinema 4D series. If you haven't checked it out, please do. We're gonna link it up in the description below and also right here on YouTube. All right, let's get into today's tutorial. It's all about using that motion capture data to create a really cool looking robot. It's gonna be all glossy. We're gonna use top coat, Cinema 4D, and we're gonna use that motion capture data. So make sure if you haven't watched uh, video one that you go back and rewatch that one. In video one, we go over how to find all the motion capture data and then also how to import it into Cinema 4D. We're gonna start right there on this video. So let's head on into Cinema 4D and let's start making a robot. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D and I'm gonna show you how to get that glossy robot look that you saw in the preview. Now. Uh, just as everyone's following along, I want to make sure that you go into your take manager. If you're following along with our Mixamo uh, model here and you want to make sure that you turn off your overrides, if you don't, everything's going to be grayed out when you try to change it. So just a reminder to come up here to lock overrides, turn it off in the take system and then come back to your object menu and now you're all set to go. Okay, so we're gonna build this glossy kind of car paint robot. Um, we're gonna use some HDR lighting and some uh, top coat to texture it. Now, of course, we're gonna use our tools that we built because they save time. That's why we built them. So we can get these looks in minutes instead of hours. Uh, we can experiment with different lighting and we can quickly change our textures. Uh, we built these tools so that uh, people with clients, people with bosses can work faster and do more and make more beautiful stuff. So really quickly here, uh, we already have top coat open. Uh, I'm gonna add HDRI Studio and we're gonna use HDRI Studio for the floor as well as the background as well for the lighting. And this is a really nice rig for all that stuff. I'm gonna close top coat just for a second. First thing is, is our background. I'm gonna click on here and make kind of a, a medium dark gray in the back. And then on the edges, it's gonna be pure black. And that's just gonna give us this really nice little glow in the center here. Uh, next thing is our reflective floor. Let's go into our floor settings, add a little bit of blur as well as some reflection. And that'll just give us that really nice, let's back out a little bit, just so we could see it. That really nice floor reflection as this robot starts to dance around and give us some moves here. Okay, now let's get into some textures. Now, our HDR Studio rig already uh, comes preloaded with um, an HDR already set to go. We have this nice studio HDR, we could rotate it around. In fact, I'm gonna put the big softbox up to the right. We may change this later, but that's just gonna set us up for some renders. Now let's talk about textures because textures and reflections and lighting, they all go together. They all, you change one and the other ones change, right? So you have to work on them all at the same time. In this case, for this robot here, I want to work on this texture first. This would be kind of our car paint here. So let's go ahead and open that up. Let's open up top coat again. You can open it up in the menu here if you have it installed as well. You wanna click on this um, texture we're gonna go into our modifiers here and we're gonna say turn off color channel. We're not gonna worry about the color channel at all. In fact, we're just gonna build it all with reflectance. Okay, so this first layer here, I'm actually just gonna delete the spec channel that kind of came standard with that texture. And now I'm gonna build up our car paint texture from scratch. The first thing we need is our base paint color. Now, our base color is, it could be whatever you want. Red always looks nice, especially when it comes to uh, cool looking robots here. So we have this dark red. In fact, I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. I'm gonna click render to see where we are. Okay, so that's uh, not bad, um, but we're not using physical render settings uh, and we're gonna get a more accurate, uh, especially when we're talking with reflectance, um, some more accurate feedback if we're using physical render settings. Now we also include a ton of, of physical render settings with top coat and HDR Studio Rig. So if you click add render settings, it's gonna add all these render settings to your project. And this is gonna allow you to kind of work low quality and then render high quality and just quickly change between these without having to type and change all the actual physical render settings, which could get a little complicated. So uh, I'm just gonna choose light kit low for this. And the reason we're using light kit is just because we're not using any global illumination for this one. We just want a kind of a basic look here. 
and it's very fast. We could change it down the road. Okay, so that's our base red. I still think it's a little bit bright. Let's darken it up. Again, this is just a base color. Okay, so that looks good. Uh, I'm gonna go to our modifiers and I'm going to add a little bit uh, more Fresnel and that's just gonna darken um, the, the texture a little bit more. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, the next one is our most important layer when it comes to layering your textures. And remember, layering your reflectance is where you really start to get some photoreal looking textures, not just one reflection, but many, right? So in this case, we're gonna add a gloss layer. And the way you do that with Top Coat is just shift click gloss. That's gonna add our gloss layer. And then we're gonna go in and change it to more of a bright red slash orange. And you can see now that is starting to give us that really nice kind of glow. Okay, so that's okay, but I think we could do a little bit better. Um, the first thing I want to do is brighten it up. So I'm actually gonna turn on my interactive render region, and that's just gonna show me a really fast preview of what I'm doing. And I use this all the time because I wanna see results quickly. As I tweak things and change things, I wanna see fast results. So let's go to our modifiers, and I'm gonna select our gloss layer. I'm gonna turn down our Fresnel amount, and that's just gonna brighten our layer overall. That's what I'm going for. I'm going for a little more of that kind of blingy gold almost. I'm also gonna turn up our blur amount. And that's just gonna kind of sheen it out a little bit more and really give it that kind of metallic feel to it. I'm gonna get the whole robot here. That's looking pretty good. Okay, of course, no car paint is finished without the top coat. And uh, that's why we call it top coat. We gotta add some lacquer to this thing. I'm gonna shift click again. And again, now I'm gonna add that lacquer coat on top of it. And they all, you can see they all are a very important part of the process. And in fact, this lacquer is a little bit too bright. I'm gonna tone it down just a bit. And you could even warm it up too. If you don't want it pure, uh, just clear, you just add a little bit of that warmth back into that texture and that's just gonna warm things up. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. Um, one thing I do wanna do is go into our studio rig and just kinda crank up our reflection and maybe even rotate it around a little bit more and just get off to the side. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Um, and again, let's look at this these layers really carefully. One, two, and three, and if we just turn on the lacquer, that's just regular old reflection. That looks that looks kind of boring now, right? We have our gloss layer, which is doing a lot of the heavy lifting for this kind of bling stuff. And then we have our base, which is filling in all the little gaps here. Okay, so next one is our rubber texture. This will be really easy. Let's just select our, um, our other texture that is already on all the uh, joints here. And for this one, uh, I'm just gonna click um, dull. So dull is just kind of this rubber look here and it's gonna fill in all the gaps. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna go into our modifiers so we could tweak it a little bit. I'm actually gonna turn down our reflection amount and up our blur amount and down our Fresnel amount. So that's just gonna give us a little bit of a brighter feel. And, and now I'm just gonna dial it up and down with our reflection amount. I kind of want it this really, really dark rubber. So it's not very reflective, but it is catching a lot of the, the light data. So let's render that, see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm realizing our backdrop is a little bit bright in the center. And you'll see me bounce around like this all the time. This is how I work. This is how a lot of people work. They don't just texture, 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 and then light, 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 and then render, right? It's always a back and forth. It's always a balance between lighting and texturing and backgrounds and, and all this stuff. And I'm looking at this and I like the studio look. It's looking okay. But the nice thing about HDR Studio Rig um, is that you can really test out different HDRs very quickly. You could open our browser here and we have other packs, uh, other than the standard studio packs, you could get things like European Holiday. So I'm gonna click our church entrance here. This is a really fun one. Look at that light detail coming in. I love this one. I'm actually gonna rotate it around so it's on the other side. You can turn on our preview so we can kind of dial it in. You can see that bright light is now coming from the right again. Turn off that preview, check that out. I mean, look at the detail on that. I'm actually gonna just grab a camera here and we'll come back to that camera, but I just wanna zoom in and show you some of that detail. Really, really cool stuff. Okay, let's jump back to our camera. Speaking of our camera, let's set that up. I'm gonna use a more zoomed in camera, something like a 70 millimeter here. That's gonna give us a little bit more distance from us to our, um, our character. And that's just gonna give us some nice uh, kind of um, feel 
as if we're in a studio, right? We're not shooting this on a street where we're really close to our character. We have some distance and, and choosing the right camera is gonna give us a different feel. Okay, before we get rendering this thing, which I think it looks pretty good, I wanna talk to you about the shadows. Now, you remember we clicked our light kit low settings and this was so that we could see results very quickly. But in this case, we actually might have a reason to shoot with global illumination for this scene. So let's turn on GI low and you can see we get some beautiful shadows here on the floor. In fact, just to show you, what I mean, I'm just gonna brighten up the center here just for a second. Check out the shadows that we're getting on the floor there. This is why, this is when global illumination can really come in handy. Okay, so I um, I undid that back to our, our dark background. We have some reflections going on. Let's make sure our GI low is turned on. That is looking good. Now let's just check out different parts of our render here. This is gorgeous. It's looking great. But I think we're all set to go. So from here, of course, we wanna make sure our um, high quality settings are, are here. And that's a part of, of why we built these presets is so that you could dial up and down your um, render settings, keep it low while you're working, and then crank it up, GI medium maybe for this one, uh, and when you do a final render. So of course, now we have to set up our, our uh, render here, 1920 by uh, 1080. Um, you could do uh, 30 frames a second looks good and we're gonna do all frames. Remember, we need to send out an animation. Uh, don't forget to also go to your save and pick where you want this to be saved. Turn it on, select file, save it out. Double check a couple frames here. Maybe do a high res frame here just to see what that looks like. Look at that crunch through there. It's rendering relatively quickly for how many reflections and all that data. And we really tweak these render settings to give you as good a look as possible with the least amount of render time. And these look, this one looks pretty nice. All right, I think we're, um, I think we're ready to go. So from here, you hit render and you got uh, Dancing Robot, my friends. Thanks again for watching this tutorial today. I got a quick question of the day for you before we go. What upcoming tutorial would you like to see on Grayscale Gorilla? We're always looking for new ideas. And if you have one, please post it in the comments below. We would love to see what you want us to build. Now, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a bunch more videos just like this coming out. And also, if you haven't checked it out, check out our Intro to Cinema 4D series. It's completely free. I'm gonna link it up in the description and right here on YouTube. All right, we have a lot more videos, like I said, so I hope to see you in the next tutorial right now. I'll see you later, guys. Have fun. Keep rendering. Catchphrases. Woo! Okay, bye. Glossy Metal Robot. Let's go, Glossy Metal Robot. It's a glossy metal robot. Yeah!